Hello, hello. Hello, 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 hello. Believe I'm live. Turn this off. There we go. A lot less kind <laughs> of white noise in the background. Instead, let's, uh, let's mess with my thermostat remotely. Still my favorite feature about a Nest thermostat is the ability to, to mess with it remotely. All right, cool. So what we're going to be doing today is working on this kind of uh, hunter story kind of thing, which is to say, look at that. <laughs> Now I just need to hook it up to an actual, you know, or our levels, et cetera, et cetera. There is your skills, but you don't really have any skills right now. Here are your stats. Those are your kind of meta stats. Um, and then we'll probably have some sort of, I guess, I guess a meta or navigation bar at the very bottom. Maybe like a navigation bar on the side. I don't know. I'm still thinking about it. Still thinking about it. Anyways, I need to have labels here for the, the various level types. And then these various level types will probably be like auto-generated. And so they'll, they'll try to point towards the combat screen. So the combat screen is kind of its own thing. So we'll load in, you can see there, and then we have, bah, you, you can launch an arrow and you'll hit the thingy. Has a little bit of knockback, very MapleStory-esque. And there's no charge up, but we'll need some way to transition from those two screens or these two screens into each other. Uh, and I have a few ideas on how to do that. This is the level select screen. This is what it kind of just looks like by itself. How neat. So, most of these we don't care about. So, we do care about this HBox container. This bottom one we don't care about as much. And then inside of this container we only care about this side. So we're trying to generate I guess like level, level, level rows, I guess. So let's see what we can do about that. Shouldn't be too bad, right? Because each one of these will just be probably a V, no, H box, a horizontal box container. So let's just start, you know, as we usually do, start typing and hopefully it'll come to me on how to, how to do this properly. So, levels. Hmm, so what do we want? We want to have, probably like, a label. That's a good one. Always good to have a label. So let's expand it. Vertical, it doesn't really matter. Um, probably two labels and then a button. Yeah. And then that button will be, I guess also your rank, or maybe we'll have your, the rank, the level name, and then the rank, the level name, and then just like start level, I guess. <laughs> so this is like, uh, boom, two levels, and then we'll add a muton to it. And then this button will take up the rest of the space. So label, label, and then this button will just have to be... Uh, let's expand. Yeah, so then we these these labels all take up roughly the same amount of space. Uh, I'm not sure what I... This first label, if it's going to be like a clear rating, maybe it's better to make this like a texture rect instead. So this is like your... Clear rating. This is your level name, and then this is just the button. <laughs> so 
So this is like start, the start button. Wow. All right, the start button. Oh, you know what? It might be nice to have like uh, multiple buttons for this as well, right? So we'll boom, hbox, size flag, expand, drop this button into here. Right. So then we have, uh, this is our entire container. This is our clear rating. Nothing right now. I might change this to be a text direct in the future. This one will be the level name. So this is change me as well. Change me. We'll just call it. We'll just call it level name. All lowercase. And then this is clear rating. All lowercase. The Julia fans out there in chat, overjoyed. <laughs> what am I kidding? I don't have any. What who programs Julia? Julius for nerds. Nor do I have anyone in chat. Oh, and you know what? This probably needs to in be entirely wrapped inside of a panel container as well. So, I'll drop this into here. Look at that. Eh, yeah, well, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. I think it's quite okay. Um, so let's let's do let's do a thing. This is level row. Save and then we will save branch as seen. This is a level row. Um, screens level select screen level row. And then we can go here, boom, into this thingy, layout. Let's just make this full rect. It doesn't really matter since it'll be changing anyways, right? This changes, like this thing does not control its own uh, sizing. The size of this inner element is always gonna be controlled by the containing element, unless it's the base element which is something that was hard for me to wrap my head around when I was first doing a deal, but now it makes a lot of sense. So it's very, I guess, un-CSS-like, or I guess un-HTML-like, in that you cannot <laughs> manually control the style of each element, but I think it makes more sense this way. Like, if you want to control the style of each element, you need to have many root elements. But in this case, this works well enough for me. So, these are all... Yeah, I think that, look, that looks okay. That looks okay. And then this is what it looks like uh, <laughs> normally, which is to say it looks kind of ugly. Well, you know, this one, we need to change this as well. We'll slap a theme onto it. Go into Assets, Styles, Main Theme. Yeah, there we go. So, level, select screen, let's just test it. It doesn't do anything right now. What? We'll click on new game, click on that, boom. Now we're here. So these are levels. Nothing here right now. You can click on this, start. Doesn't actually do anything. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Um, so... Now we'll take this out. <laughs> now, now that we know how it looks, we can go into level row. Well, first of all, level row, we're going to need a few things attached to this. Um, so let's create a script. What will level row do? Level row will always bring you to a combat screen, but that combat screen will have several several things attached to it. So let's do const, combat, screen. I'm not sure if this is easier or not. Or maybe we don't even need to have a script attached to it. Yeah, actually, now I'm thinking about it, yeah, we don't really need to have a script attached to it. Well, we do need to have a script attached to it. We just need, uh, 
we just need to have uh, a signal we can uh, listen to. So we can do kind of the, the rebroadcasting pattern that I'm such a fan of. Right? So we'll signal, pressed. So we can reduplicate the pressed signal. Oh, actually, mm, yeah, mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a bit wonky, but hear me out. So we go into here, connect, pressed, to self, on, pressed. Yeah, and then this is pressed with, uh, pressed with name. <laughs> so that we know, or pressed with data, pressed with data, perhaps. Pressed with data. Maybe. Hmm. On press, and then we'll have. Yeah, okay. Press with data, and then we'll just have some data that we send along with it. And then guess what? We have data. <laughs> Um, I think that's okay, yeah. I think that's okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we'll have funk on pressed. So pressed. The, the button pressed command does not pass along any data that we can use uh, because it doesn't pass along any data, but that's what we're here for. So we have our data. Not really sure how I want to structure this. Uh, if we're going fast and loose, we'll make it a dictionary. If we want it a bit more structured, we'll make it uh, not a dictionary. We'll instead make it like a class. So this is like some sort of model class. Not sure where to do that. Combat screen data, maybe. Yeah, I, I guess we could have like combat screen data, and just have that be like a reference, right? Because that's a bit easier to to wrap your head around. Or perhaps like a resource, so we can duplicate it. Combat screen data. Yeah, let's let's have a let's have a combat screen data. So we have combat screen data. This will be a reference. Create this. And what is what is this? This is just gonna be like a struct more or less, right? And let's try to avoid as many class names as possible. Um, so what are we gonna have in this? We'll have var, uh, I don't know. What would you want to pass to the combat screen in order to kind of define the, like define what's spawned and like the spawn rate? Or maybe we just have like var enemies, right? And then this will be some sort of dictionary. We'll just initialize it as nothing for now. Right, so you have an empty dictionary of enemies. Um, I guess like a spawn rate, bar spawn rate, maybe like a spawn pattern. You know what, we're gonna add, the, we're gonna add a class name to this. Class name, combat screen data. Oh baby. Um, so we'll have an enum called like spawn rate. So there is. We'll do my classic none, and then we'll have like I don't know, slow, normal. 
fast. And then like instant. <laughs> That's, that's a instant spawn rate sounds a bit menacing. Not gonna lie. Spawn rate none. There we go. So then enemies don't really know what we want here. Maybe we can have we can we can have an enum that kind of maps to each entity. So we have many en many enemies. So we'll have like an enum, enemy, enemy. And so we'll have the none, enemy. Let's see, what other one? There's like blue snail, that's a good one. Should probably make a green snail at some point as well. So you have your green snail, your blue snail, your red snail, maybe a rainbow snail, mossy snail, then you'll have your mushrooms. <laughs> Everyone's favorite horny mushroom, if only because it has horns. So then you'll have... I guess this will be... We can define this as... Uh, let's see... This is... This is enemy to int. Or this is like an enemy enum to int amount. Yeah. Something like that. What other thing do we want? Huh. <laughs> Let's see. I mean spawn rate and then enemies. And then after that, I suppose you could try to define the spawn order if you wanted. But that seems kind of jank. I think I'd rather just kind of like randomly pull. So like and then just have like I guess special instructions maybe. Special instruction var special special instruction. <laughs> special instructions dictionary. And then we'll, we'll figure out what exactly we want there. How do I, did I spell that wrong? Yeah. Oh, equals. There we go, clear that. Special instructions, nothing really that I can think of, right? Or custom, custom instructions, I guess. Yeah. And that will just have to be handled like as a special case inside of the combat screen, yeah. But other than that, yeah, we'll have spawn rate, which controls uh, the spawn timer. We'll have enemies, which defines how much of each enemy will appear in each stage. Um, the spawn order will more or less be random, but I suppose that can be controlled via special instructions. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or we can have like a class, which is like, uh, like spawn data. <laughs> but that, that seems tough. That seems tough. I think we'll just go with random for now. And then we, if we need to extend it, we'll extend it. Otherwise, I think it's, it's, uh, it's getting a little complicated, you know? Yeah. And then we can always add like helper functions here. Right, so if we need some way to easily add an enemy, we can add helper function to kind of like abstract away a lot of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but this is our combat screen data. Our level row will have data, which will correspond to combat screen data. So level select screen back to here. This is our levels, we can go back to Level select screen, and then we will. Hmm. Let's see. Some of these are custom, but I forget which ones. <laughs> are like skills is custom more or less. Yeah. No. Right? No. Wait a minute. Am I crazy? Huh? Hold on. So we go here. 
Look at that sick fade. Stats. Where is stats? Stats container. Oh, yeah, yeah, see? There we go. I just didn't scroll down far enough. Because I'm apparently blind. Here it is. Let's, let's grab one combat screen data. Actually, no, we don't need to grab combat screen data since we made it a class. I'm trying to use them somewhat sparingly. This one, we cannot make a class. We actually need to do const. This is a level row, some sort of packed scene. And then we'll preload one of these, right? So now our level row is preloaded into the top level thingy. Hmm. And then level previous path, level next path. Oh, and then we need to do on ready var skills previous, which is uh I think that's a button. Is equal to get node skills pre path. It's my favorite part. It's just being able to copy over all of this stuff. Skills next path on ready var. Oh, and then we need just regular skills, which is, I believe that, yeah, that's just a VBox container. Get node skills path on ready var level previous, which is a Python. Get node levels, previous path, level, levels, next. Every day I get more and more nervous <laughs> that this keyboard is gonna break. Cause I had this keyboard for two years, which is, um, I guess it's not a very long amount of time, but it is like a custom keyboard <laughs> with custom switches, so I feel like I should get like a backup. So just in case anything breaks on it. I've actually already lost one of the screws. It kind of fell out when I was moving. So like one of the, the screws that's holding the plate in place is uh, <laughs> it's just gone. It's not too hard to grab another one. Or is it, I guess, source another one, but you know. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, I said you know, and then hoped that I would figure out what I wanted to say after that, but I didn't. It's kind of an unfounded fear, I'll admit. Like not being able to replace this keyboard. Uh, or at least these switches, man. And this keyboard, since it is like a funny layout as well. So all the keys are the same width, which means there's no big shift bar or shift key. There's no big space key. I just have two space keys, <laughs> which is nice. So whenever I, when I'm playing games, I'll use the left space bar. When I'm typing, I generally just use the right space bar. <laughs> so I have a, I have a gaming space bar and a, and just like a regular typing space bar, which is a little unexpected to be sure. All right, so we need to hook up some of these. So there's a skill previous on skills previous, which is a, just a button. Then we'll have on skills next. Then this is on levels previous. And then the corresponding levels next. Wow. Doesn't do anything j just yet. However, you can kind of see how that would map out to the UI. Uh, so I don't really have like different pages. So the idea here is that I'll just kind of cache the nodes <laughs> as needed, or maybe I'll just construct the nodes as needed whenever you press like next or previous, whatever. And so we, we kind of implement paging like that. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good idea or if I, or if I can just have like a scroll bar and that might make more sense. 
I'll see how it feels. I'll see how it feels. But this will be like skills, and then I guess we'll have a var skills page. And then I guess skills page will start at one. Because <laughs> this isn't a, I guess, a variable var. This is levels. Where this isn't a. Yeah, I mean, it corresponds to like a real page. So things that correspond to like real actual things, I tend to start indexing at one. But if we're, you know, we're doing like computer science -y stuff, I'll start indexing at zero. You know what? Let's start indexing at zero. <laughs> yeah, I said it out loud and I was like, wait a minute. That doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? He doesn't know what he's doing. So skills previous, and of course, whenever we change the page, we'll also need to keep track of the the levels page. So you know, we'll do this one's pretty easy. So or actually, a lot of these are pretty easy, right? So this is skills page minus equals one, and then if skills page is equal to zero, then skills previous is equal to or skills previous this this is a button right skills previous so buttons have the ability to be disabled yes so we'll go into here skills previous disabled equals true else I don't know we'll just do this every time skills previous disabled is equal to false right and then we'll do pretty much the same thing here except this one will have to be like the skills max um so what do we want this to be I, I, I guess I'll just have to I'll have to think about how many pages or how many items I want to display on each page, right? So we'll have like const. I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna start throwing everything into the kind of like inline. So const will have skills per page, which is some sort of ints. And we'll call it, we'll call it like six. We'll probably call it six skills per page and then similarly like levels per page which I believe we can actually fit more per page since it's, yeah since it's longer yeah 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 we can yeah I think 10 is fine skills we can actually bump it down or we can cut it in half yeah since I guess there will be like a, a bigger icon or something uh and then I guess like the max page will have to be the amount of skills. I wonder if this is something I can pre-calculate or not. Hmm. I don't know. Anyways, we'll leave these as subs for now because I, I still need to think about this. To do stub. These are all stubs, but you know, I don't need to write to do stub for all of them. So in the ready function, we'll have, I guess we'll just need to construct the first, or we'll need to construct the level list, I guess. So we'll have level data, so var, level data, which is, we'll say it's an array. It's an array of oh, level data, which is an array of combat screen data. Right, and then we'll do <laughs> Yeah, and then yeah, we can just slice the we can slice this array later. So level data dot append 
then this will need to be level data. Let me see. This might be better to do as an XML file, but I'm not going to do it. Resist the urge to, <laughs> to do all your configuration via XML file. You absolute madman. Level data, append. This will be, hold on, there's nothing to append. Since there is no init for combat screen data. So we need to do, hmm. I guess we'll do var data zero, which is will equal combat screen data new, and then data zero dot <laughs> spawn rate. Spawn rate is equal to combat screen data spawn rate. We'll call it call it normal. <laughs> normal. Uh, what other thing do we have here? Yeah, then it's just enemies. So data zero enemies is equal to combat screen data enemy blue snail. Hold on, that's not how that works. One of these is equal to, let's call it 10. We'll call it 10. Right. And then we'll just append that to level data, right? So level data append data zero, right? And so that's our, I guess our blue snail stage. Oh, and then combat screen data will need to have like screen name or level name, right? So level var level name, some sort of string, call it change me. <laughs> so, Going back to here, let's see, we'll do data zero level name is equal to, I don't know, just call it blue snails. It's a level name, so let's have just blue snail, blue snails, the Lord. I love it, ship it. He's a master namer. Data zero, level data, append. And then once we finish creating all the level data, then we'll need to do like four, for I in level data. So each I is going to be, you know, data, but we'll call it I since I'm lazy. So for I in a level data, then we need to create a new level row. So bar row, which is some sort of control. I forget what exactly. It's a panel container, you dummy, but it doesn't matter. So level row, that instance, right? And then how do we want to adjust this? So we'll need to have, hmm, Hmm. So this implies, so clear rating implies that we'll also be maintaining some sort of DB on the back, the back end as well, but we won't, we won't mess with that just yet. We'll have our level name, which we'll can, we can do as like an on ready bar. Or no, we'll, we'll do that later, right? So there's our data that we want to pass along. Oh, and we need to make sure to do this. So we also need to uh, re-emit pressed with data. So we'll do emit signal pressed with data, data, <laughs> phenomenal. How does he think of these? Um, then, so there's our data, then we'll have level name, some sort of string. And then clear rating, I guess we'll just need to pull clear rating from somewhere uh, to do store and pull clear rating from somewhere. Some sort of persistent data, I'm not sure where. But that's, that's gonna be in the future. Here we can do level name dot 
text is equal to level name so that that's all kind of handled during initialization how nice so row dot data is equal to i oh yeah there we go so we don't even need level data goodbye now this is this is just the level data dot level name yeah look at that how clean, how clean. So for I and level data, then we'll just do this. And then we'll do var data one. <laughs> Combat screen data new. Data one, level name, testing LMAO. Data one, spawn rate. We'll call, we can call this uh, spawn rate instant. <laughs> So we'll have two types of spawn rates that we'll be testing. So there's the normal spawn rate, which will have like, a, I guess a trickle of enemies. Or maybe we'll have like a different modifier. So like you'll have a spawn rate and then like a, I guess a spawn type. So you can have batched spawns. And then you can also have like just a constant spawn. Like, so it'll, it'll, it'll stream or it'll batch. So you, enemies will either come like kind of like one at a time, more or less, or enemies will come in like groups. Slightly offset groups, mind you, but still in groups nevertheless. Nevertheless. I think that'll work. Well, this will work for now, right? So we'll we'll just assume a constant. You know what? Let's add this right now. Let's add this right now. Spawn rate, and then we'll have an enum spawn type. So that we'll have none, which is zero. Then we'll have linear, and then batch. And then I guess if it's instant, it doesn't even matter what your, your spawn type is, right? Spawn type int is equal to spawn type none, none, like that. So pretty much all of these, yeah, we, we can call this one data zero spawn type is equal to combat screen data spawn type linear. I mean, that's, that's pretty easy. That's pretty standard. Then data one. Well, yeah, data one, it's using instant spawns. Who cares? We'll ignore it. Uh, so let's see, combat, screen data, enemy, blue snail. And we'll call this, oh no, let's, let's call this five. Why, why did I make this a float? You can never spawn in like a portion of an enemy. So these, these must all be ints. If it's a float, I guess we'll just have to convert it to an integer. Otherwise, I don't know how that would work. So for i and level data, row data is equal to i. Level rows will all kind of, uh, I guess, fix themselves. <laughs> and then here, we'll have a handler function. So on uh, level row pressed. And then this will give me, I guess, the data, or which is combat screen data. So I give it to it, I give it to the, the element, and then the element just gives it back to me. So I'm, I'm basically storing it. And then whenever I press the button, so whenever I press, so I, oh, I give each of these rows some data to hold. And then when I, whenever I press the start button here, it'll give me back that data so I know which data to you know, load in with the new screen. That makes sense. That makes sense. He says as he tries to reassure himself of his uh, his plan's effectiveness. Pressed with data. So pressed with data. Self. Then on. What did I call this? On level row pressed. So on level row pressed, it'll give me back this stuff, and then. We need to have 
one of these combat screen. Let's copy the path. So const combat screen, which is uh, some sort of node CD. Let's preload it. I believe combat screen is a node CD. Packs, oh, it's a pack scene, sorry. Anyways, yeah, you can see here that's a no 2D. Combat screen, bum bum bum. Then we'll go combat screen var screen <laughs> var node 2D is equal to combat screen dot instance screen dot. Let's see, combat screen, what, what things do you have initially? So on ready, you can have all of these. Let's see, we can also give you combat screen data. Or we can just give you, let's call it data, right? Of type combat screen data. So you must have one of these attached. Otherwise, I don't know. I don't know how that'll work. <laughs> I guess we can handle default cases. Or no, let's not handle default cases. Handling default cases is for nerds. So then we'll go into game manager, main, change, screen hold on that's not how this works uh let's see that's not how this works so change screen we can either provide a path with a string hmm you know what? We can just pass this along. So we, we, we need to change uh, the main menu. Yeah, so let's do this. Let's do this. So we'll, we'll preload this. Const, this is level select screen, which is a packed scene, equals preload, whatever this is, right? And then here we'll do var screen is equal to level select screen dot instance. We'll just kind of leave the type ambiguous for now. Then change screen. Let's see. It's in main display. This one screen, which is some sort of node. We'll get rid of this. Right, and then just do that, one of these, right? So change screen to some sort of screen. We do not provide a path. Yeah, 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 yeah. It makes more sense doing it this way. This way we can also preload the resources and then pass them along and then modify them before we actually add them to the, the scene, which is nice. So then here, I believe this should still work. Actually, no, it won't. Hold on. <laughs> screen. There we go. Now that's fixed. Then here, we'll do screen. Screen.data is equal to this. And then we'll do game manager main change screen. Screen. Wow. Um, and yeah. Then combat screen, we don't do anything with it just yet, but we'll have it. It's accessible, so then do this. Wow. Trying to assign value of type progress bar to variable of type label. This is a progress bar. Progress bar. All right, send me one more time. Send me one more time. So new game. Wow. Okay, so it did not instance in all of these because... Oh, because I, I, I created them and I just dropped them. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure we leaked. No. No, that's... Uh, I guess that's fine. For... All right, so level... Levels. So we'll do levels dot call deferred add child. And then we'll add the row to it, just like that. So... Let's see. New game. Clear rating, blue snails galore. 
Did I forget to add it? I did forget to add it. Hold on. So level data append data one. Wow. So go to new game. Clear rating, nothing. Blue snails galore. Uh, none of these buttons do anything. I can press start. Yeah, look at that. We have the, the, the Maple Story style like damage numbers as well. That are <laughs> that is being obscured by the duck. Close this out. Make sure we're not leaking any data. All right, sick. So let's start handling this data here. So given this type of data, okay, so <laughs> this is where I need to have multiple files open at once. So let's close this stuff. We don't need this. Yeet. Go to dev, ignore how many side projects I have going on concurrently. Select folder. We're doing this in base GD script because I one of the goals of this project is a, the ability to What do I have Jupyter key map open? What is this? Just disable this. Jupyter key map? Is this required by Python? Why do I have that installed? I don't I don't use any Jupyter notebooks. Enough whinging. Uh so screens, combat screen. So we have combat screen, GD, and then combat data, GD. Right, so let's open this up on the side. <laughs> huh. So we have our data. We have our damage numbers. Our arrows. All right, so these are just nodes, so we don't care. Hmm. And then, yeah, this is just our player. So I think player player is something else I'll need to adjust in the future. But just remember that player will never move, so that makes it easy. And then also the player just kind of spawns in arrows. <laughs> so. How nice. Yeah, so we'll, we'll need to read the the data, right? So level name doesn't matter. Spawn rate does. So we do have, inside of the combat screen, we do have just an enemy spawn point, which is convenient. We can probably stand to move it a, a little farther back. Uh, and so, yeah, spawn rate. Hmm. So spawn rate. Let me see. Okay, so we, we can have several data fields here. Um, I'm trying to think, how would you want to do this, right? So, because these spawn rates don't actually correspond to any numbers. Actually, that's a lie. They do literally correspond to integers, but we're not going to be using the integers. Um, so, how do we want to do this? We want to do, we want to do something like match data spawn rates, and then we'll do like combat screen data, spawn rate dot uh, what you call it uh, slow and then we'll just have to copy this over for every single one of them so this is slow normal one of these fast and then instant And then if it's none, or if it's anything else, then we'll need to like basically throw an error. All right, so game manager log message unhandled spawn 
Great. One of these. And then we just won't do anything with that, I guess. Yeah, I think that makes sense. And then we'll just have to have, like... I guess values that correspond to this. Right, so we'll have... Like an export var... Export var spawn spawn rates, which is some sort of dictionary, and then we'll even initialize it with several things. So then there's like the slow, there's slow spawn rate, which will be this will be some sort of float. So slow will say once every two seconds, I guess. So normal will make this once every second. not do this. Invalid, only built-in... Oh, I spelled dictionary wrong. <laughs> dictionary. Yeah. So, fast. So, fast, we'll, we'll call it 0.5. So, that's 0.5 is our pretty fast, right? So, bum, 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 bum. So, bum, 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 bum. Yeah, fast is pretty fast. Normal is bum, 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 and then slow is bum, bum, yeah, okay. And of course, these are just, uh, you know, these are just the things. And then instant, we'll have to just, we'll just call it zero, I guess. It doesn't matter. Instant. You know, ramen noodles. Instant. Uh, yeah, okay. And then the, did it not save instant? Hit. Spawn rate. Okay, that's cool. You know, you don't have to give me a, an instant one. Oh, did it not show it because it's, uh, <laughs> it's zero? If I make it point 0.1. No, point zero. Like out of it. Eh? <laughs> Bring me back. Yeah, okay, there it is. So zero. Okay, so those are our spawn rates. We can configure those in the editor if we want. And then we'll just remember. We'll have to change it back at some point. Uh, so the spawn rates, spawn types, no. Yeah, actually, that's it, right? <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I think that works. That works. And then this is the, we'll just have like spawn rates, I guess. And this will be a float. And then we'll, need, we'll just need to access them somehow like this. So spawn rate is equal to spawn rates dot slow. God, I hate how the 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 GD script plugin for VS Code does that. It hates tabulation for some reason. So something that might be easier on me is if, if I just use these as yeah. I, I, if I change how this works, like I, I get rid of this as an enum, so it's no longer an enum. We make this const spawn rate one of these right then we call this none yeah I don't like how I have to do this but it, it is what it is Oop. so th this will work it's very Java style though I think although you can do the same thing in C sharp I'm losing the ability to type. My only marketable skill is my prodigious typing rate. Alright, so string. Let's see. 
So we'll do, also do this one is spawn type. Dictionary is equal to. I always include a none type just so that we don't encounter unhandled behavior or undefined behavior, which is the, the more industry term for it. So this is const enemy some sort of dictionary. Uh, so as always, we go with none. And then this one is blue snail. It's always really useful to be able to set something to a string. OK, cool or get the, the string representation of something, which is something you can't do with Godot, unfortunately. Right, so this makes this really easy, right? So for this one, now we'll just do spawn rate is equal to uh, spawn rates data spawn rate, right? And then that'll get us whatever this number is without having to have that kind of really long match statement. And then we'll cache that value for later. So it's just a float. And so the benefit of this is twofold. Now we're able to configure these values from the editor, and then we'll also be able to, you know, use it. <laughs> It'll just work via code. So that's our spawn rate. Spawn type, I guess we'll just have to match on that directly. It doesn't, there's not too much we can do about that, right? Spawn type, we'll cache that. Spawn type, yeah. Spawn type is equal to data spawn type. Let's see, what else do we want? Enemies. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We can grab all of these, it doesn't matter. Var enemies, which is some sort of dictionary. Just need to remember that we're always going to be, did I spell this wrong again? Enemies. Oh, that's the enemies node, so I can't do that. Oh, okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> we, we can just grab the, the thing from the data our enemy data. There's a disconnect between hand and brain. I say one thing and then my hands just kind of physically do something else. <laughs> Which is to say, I, was, I said I was going to pull it directly from the data, but actually, nah. Nah, we ain't about that enemy data. Right, so now, combat screen, I guess we'll, we can add a timer. So this will be our spawn timer. We'll call this spawn timer. So one shot, yeah, more or less, right? I prefer making these one shots. Yeah. Because I guess it's just more predictable when I control when the timer runs. And let's add another export var. This one will have to be uh, spawn timer node path. And let's grab all of this, insert it here, just so it kind of matches the node layout as well. On ready var. Oh, hold on. Spawn timer path. And then this one will be an on ready var spawn timer. This is a timer. Let's slap this into here. You know, I heard about this trick from someone on stream and figured that that eh, actually a really good idea to do things this way. Uh, so spawn timer. <laughs> you can see that our node structure, our scene tree structure is pretty simple. Uh, we just have the ground and then everything else is more or less just a child of the base node, the root node. Just how, like how, just how I like my uh, node structures. <laughs> 
very flat. Not nested, just flat. So let's see, funk on spawn timer time. We'll just call it on spawn timer. It's easier this way. Just trust me, bro. Uh, so spawn timer. Let's do this down here. So spawn timer. Connect. Time out. So then on spawn timer like so. Right. And so then whenever this timer times out. Oh, and then we'll we'll need to start the timer based off of let's see spawn timer start. Why isn't it giving me a timer? How strange. Spawn. Great. I wonder. So if you if you start a timer with zero, doesn't it just um, does it immediately trigger? I actually don't know. I guess we can see if every if it just triggers immediately. So what happens when you start with zero? Start. Starts the timer. So that's wait time to time time. Oh, time is greater than zero. Okay. Well, let's make this one so this will work. We'll make it. We'll make it point oh one. <laughs> so basically, every tick, every every physics tick, it'll uh, try to spawn something in. So that's more or less instantaneous, but it also will not cause just immense lag whenever you uh, whenever you start. So that's better. Instant instant is near instant very close to instance so that I get I guess the benefit of doing it like this uh, so instant isn't actually instant it's just near instant is that I don't need to I guess artificially space out all the enemies right so I don't need to go to this screen and make this like a an area right so we can spawn in an area instead I can just rely on the timer to space out enemies you know as appropriate You know what? I think we'll need like a sub, a spawn timer timer, <laughs> or a spawn type timer as well. So let's copy this. This is a spawn, spawn delay timer. So this is just something that also exists. So let's add this. So this is a spawn, spawn delay timer. Then go here, already var, spawn, delay timer, spawn, delay timer, path. there we go, and then close this, open this, you know what, I think the reason why it's not updating immediately is because I'm making these changes in VS Code, what a pain. But I do need to be able to look at two things at once, which is why I'm doing this. Alright, so I think these will work. So we can get rid of the enums. We'll just use the, the constants instead. As a kind of a weird workaround. Alright, so here we'll do. Um. If spawn type is equal to, uh, let's see, uh, on that screen data, spawn type batch, yeah, so a spawn type is a batch spawn. Right, um, I guess it'll work like a combination of instance, but then 
So we'll, it will instantly spawn a few things, a few enemies. I'm not sure how to define the batch. I guess we'll just have like a default batch amount. Um, and then the spawn rates will define the space between the batches. Otherwise, the spawn rate will just, you know, linear, whatever. Spawn delay timer, connect, time out. So, on spawn delay timer. So there's on spawn timer, and then on spawn delay timer. Yeah, there we go. And then there's a private function just like spawn enemy, right? That'd be pretty easy. So let's see, what do we want to do here? So let's let's change this to like spawn blue snail, because this is like this is a debug function. It's very specific. This one, funk, spawn, enemy, one of these. So, drop me back in, randomize my minion. There we go. Takes a little bit for it to, to work. I do need to change that. <laughs> So it just looks like there's more people than there actually are. Hmm, so we want to spawn an enemy. So on spawn timer, then we'll just call spawn enemy, I guess. Yeah. We won't... I guess uh, this isn't implemented yet, just yet. So we won't wor we won't worry about it for now. But we'll we'll have to we'll have to. So these are all linear instance. Doesn't make any sense to batch. Uh, yeah. So a spawn type is batch and spawn rate is not combat screen data spawn rate instant so let's break these up yeah there we go i like having things just <laughs> within 80 characters it's a little old fashioned but it does help since I. This is all. This is how big my screen is. So if I want to see two things at once, I do need to make the the column width pretty pretty small. Uh, so that's the debug stuff. We can get rid of the debug thing. So spawn enemy. So we have the enemy data. So then I think what we want to do is we will. Let's just have like an RNG. So var rng, which is some sort of random number generator, we'll just generate a new one every single time. Why not? rng is equal to random number generator new rng randomize. So we won't provide a seed, we'll just randomize it based off. I, I believe it's randomized based off the current time. So as always, rng is not truly random, but it's close enough to random such that it doesn't really matter, right? So we'll spawn an enemy, um, and then we'll want to actually kick off another spawn as well. There we go. And then here, we'll do this, right? So if we are, um, using the spawn delay timer, then we'll want to do, we want to utilize that to kind of, I guess, batch our spawns. Otherwise, linear spawns just use the regular spawn timer. 
Yeah, look at that. I like I like this. I like I like the setup. All right, and then the spawn delay timer runs off the spawn rate. Yeah, so on spawn delay timer, this is more this is still unimplemented. So to do stub doesn't do anything. Mm. So we can always spawn in a blue snail, but let's just clean that up. So we'll always have we'll always be utilizing a spawn timer. Uh, oh, and then I guess we can have like a spawn count as well. That might be nice. So var like spawn count. So we'll initialize that to zero, right? So let, let's. I said I wasn't going to implement it now, but let's let's start thinking about how we would implement it. So. Let's see. Yeah, so I guess if we are batched. Yeah. Oh. So var is batched, which is false. But here we can do is batched is true move this back there we go and then on spawn wait on spawn timer yeah we can do if hold on how would you do this it would be if if is batched do a thing otherwise just do this so if it is batched, hold on. So if is batched and I guess spawn count is less than, hold on. So we'll do some sort of export var max batch spawn. And we'll set that equal to Call it five, I guess. So we'll spawn max five at once. Uh, yeah. So and then spawn count is less than max batch spawn. Then we'll do spawn count plus equals one and then do a thing otherwise spawn count is equal to zero and then we'll just do spawn delay timer start spawn rate yeah 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 yeah, yeah. And actually this should be an lf right lf wait no hold on Bring it back to else. So if is batched, then if spawn count is less than max batch spawn, then we'll do all of this. Otherwise, yeah, there we go. So then we'll try to spawn an enemy. So this is more or less I guess like pretty close to how this should work. So the spawn rate. Or you know what? We can just we can we can we can batch them together and still use the the standard spawn rate. Although it doesn't make a lot of sense now. <laughs> now that I'm saying it out loud, it still doesn't make a lot of sense because it's always we're always going to be using the the spawn rate instance. Right, spawn rates instant. Right, so we want to kind of very slowly, once per frame, once per physics frame, spawn in an enemy so that we're kind of batching them. Right. So here's the logic don't always spawn an enemy. 
So if it is batched, I can take out this part. So if it is batched, then do all the batch stuff. Otherwise, just spawn an enemy on spawn timer and then spawn timer start spawn rate. One of these. Yeah, I like that logic. I like that logic. So if we are batching our spawns, then we have a spawn count. Uh, no, if, if we are batching, then and if our batch spawn count is less than the max, then increment our spawn count by one, spawn an enemy, and then we'll actually start our spawn timer. Right, then we loop back around, it's almost instant, boom, boom, we go down this code path again. And then once we are past the max batch spawn, we'll reset our spawn count and then start our spawn delay timer. It might be more accurate to call this like a spawn batch timer, but whatever. Spawn delay timer, and then this one. Uh, once this one is called, we'll do. It, it, this is this will just call like spawn timer start spawn rates instant like that. Yeah, that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. And then I did I remember to go here? Yeah, this is a one shot, so we will never restart, and it also does not auto start. That's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sick. I like that logic. And then finally, we have our enemy data. So we'll want to go do something like RNG random rand. I don't know. What do we want to do? If I want to select a random enemy. If I want to select a random enemy. So we can do something like this. So there's enemy data, and then there's enemy list, which is an array. And then we'll add a note generated from enemy data keys. Right? And so enemy list is equal to enemy data dot keys. So keys gives you an array of all the keys. Uh, in sh it's, it's, not, it's actually not even in string format, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. And then here we can do var random enemy some sort of string. We'll set it equal to uh, RNG rand random I range from zero to uh, enemy list dot size minus one since it's inclusive. Oh, and this will give me a an integer. Random enemy int, and then then we'll do. Ch -ch 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 -ch. Oh, hello, Allo Zingy. How are you doing today? I wasn't going to be lurking today, but wanted to pop in to say hi before. Oh, don't worry. <laughs> nice of you to stop by. It's been pretty quiet so far, so. <laughs> Your support is much appreciated, though. I won't badger you further since you are going to be lurking. Let's see, we have a random en 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 me en 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 random enemy ints, and then we will grab. Hmm. We'll just grab an enemy, right? Hmm. We wanted these, and then we just need to match it against some sort of enemy list. So, where would I store that? An enemy list. So, we have this list of enemies. Uh, here. So it shouldn't be too hard to like just match them one to one and then load it in. Yeah? <laughs> it's it's kind of a weird solution, but I 
Now that I've said it out loud, I'm kind of liking the solution, unfortunately. God, you hate to see that. Um, so var directory is equal to oh, directory new, right? And then we'll do, <laughs> I always forget how to do this. I write the same thing like all the time, but I, I never remember how to do it. So if directory, all right, so let's do one of these const enemy folder. Uh, so this is some sort of string. There we go. Entities, enemies. I believe, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine to leave in the, the trailing slash. Let's see, random enemy list. We'll do if, oh, what am I doing? Here. So if directory dot open, whatever this thing, enemy folder is, is okay. Uh, so directory li list directory begin. Oh geez. <laughs> uh, list directory begin. So we can pass in. I don't know what what what's what's the what are the values for this? Skip navigational true. Skip hidden true. Okay, cool. And then var file. You know what? Let's just grab all these. So some of these are going to be incorrect, but that's fine. Well, if, if file name get file, this doesn't exist. Uh, so it's get file and then get base name. Or hold on. So since I'm trying to just kind of, I'm, I'm trying to scour this path. So I'm only looking for uh, things that aren't a base enemy or base enemy, right? <laughs> so if this does not contain has a Hold on, var, hmm, let's see. So that's the file name. Well, file name is not nothing. Uh, this is the trimmed name is equal to file name, get file, get base name, right? And then if, if not, let's see, what is it called? Base enemy, base enemy. Is it not? Like, can't you do this? If not base enemy and trim name? Yeah, I think that, that works. Maybe, maybe we'll have to see. But what we're checking for, we're trying to filter out these two things here, because those are just kind of base classes. There's probably a better way to do this, or a better way to structure the directories. <laughs> Supposed to doing it like this, but whatever. And so this is the enemy list. This will be the enemy... Enemy paths. Text scene paths, I guess. We'll call this a dictionary. Right. So we'll have, we'll always have the file path. Yes. <laughs> yes, this will work. So then enemy, enemies path will equal the trim name, which will more or less always correspond to this value. I'm not sure why I would ever not uh, use that naming convention. And then we'll do file name. Look at that. Should work. What's your problem? Or enemy paths. Enemy paths. There we go. So enemy paths, trim name, file name, all this stuff. And then we'll just get the next one. 
right? And then we did all of this complicated logic here. So let's let's actually add a note just so I know. So let's dynamically generate a list of all enemy text scene paths. It's probably a better way of doing that. Like probably we only need to run that once as opposed to running this uh, whenever we instance in the scene, but <laughs> I'm not known for my great I great architecture, software architecture ideas. Just for the interesting ideas I may or may not have. Um, so we random enemy int and then we'll do var enemy is equal to now this is going to be a long one this is going to be a long one so combat screen so we need to grab well we need to load in enemy 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 paths and then we'll grab so enemy paths is this is uh, enemy name to file path, right? So enemy paths, enemy list is just a list of uh, the possible enemy names. <laughs> so this is enemy list and then random enemy ins instance. Oh baby. <laughs> It's beautiful. So, what we're doing here, when we spawn an enemy, we'll, random, we'll generate a random number from zero to whatever the enemy list size is. Uh, so you, al you must always pass in at least one enemy. And then enemy load enemy paths, which is dynamically generated from uh, this resource path here. So really we should only have blue snail. Uh, this enemy list is generated from uh, the enemy data that's passed in. So enemy data uh, will just correspond to basically blue snail or whatever. So that's pretty easy. So enemy list is a list of strings. We use this random int that we generated, which will always correspond to this list size. So that's, that's safe. Enemy pads possibly unsafe, and then we instance it in. So we load it and then instance it in. All in one line. <laughs> Ooh. It's not the greatest solution, but I think it'll work. I think it'll work. And then, of course, I think we can just call this a no TV. Let's see. Mm hmm, 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 hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll just do enemies call deferred. What the heck, I didn't get your notification. Uh, I blame Twitch. I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't control the notifications. <laughs> I blame Twitch. Uh, this is why you're having so much talent drain, Twitch. Your notifications don't work. Yeah, this is what we're doing. Hopefully, I can show this off and it should just work. So, open the scene, new game. Look at that. Ooh. Ah! Okay. And tempt to call function instance in base null instance on a null instance. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it looks cool because the. Or I think, it, at least I think it looks cool. Cannot open file res blue. Oh, that's wrong. So, where is this? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Enemy, enemy, enemy paths. Enemies, no, that's, that's something different. Enemy list is just blue snail. Sure, sure, sure. Enemies path, no, that's not what we want. Is batched also no? Let me see. Oh, just enemy data 
Is blue snail 10? Yeah. Spawn type linear? Yeah. Enemies? No. Um, give me this one. I, I, can, I can read this a lot easier. But how are you doing today, dead sec? Uh, forgot to ask. Always gotta hit you with the how do you do. Enemy spawn, enemy list. What did I call it? It's uh, enemy paths. I need to change that name. Because it's also really hard to find this in this uh, long list. Oh, so this is just the file name, huh? This is just the file name. Okay, that makes sense. So that's the problem, is here, this just gets you the file name. Hmm, so get next, it does not give you the absolute path. Not its full path, yes. Okay. I don't, I don't know what that means, but I'm glad. <laughs> Does quack. Uh, I guess check this out if we're talking about quacking. I'm using the new build. <laughs> Doing it live. And we're also... You can see that we have a little bit more locomotion than usual. Because I, for whatever reason, just decided to leave apply translation on. So now we can... The front of the duck now moves as well. I mean, also you can kind of see the head goes up and down. <laughs> it looks really good on the low poly duck. On higher poly models, it does look a little cursed. No different. It's subtle. It's subtle. So it, if you, I guess if you were to come, if I were to show you them side by side, it's a, it's more, uh, I guess pronounced, right? So if I turn off the, this part. You can see here that there's a, little, there's a little less neck movement, whereas if we do apply translation like this, we can kind of gyrate the neck back and forth. It's, it's, it's subtle, it's subtle, but I think it, it looks better. IMO. Anyways, we'll get out of that. It's the small things that matter in terms of uh, tracking, I think. All right, there's there's one where it kind of you kind of look super stiff because you can't really move. But if you turn on translation and then dampen it by a huge margin, it, it looks a bit more natural. So it's it like it's like the difference between like, you know, he looks very nervous and he looks very relaxed. <laughs> If you're trying to size up a person. All right, so if we do this, yeah. So if you're sizing up a person, you would want to do like a... There's a, there's a few things that you want to do. Because the, the difference between like a nervous person who's trying to appear calm and the different, and the, a person who is actually calm, is is very subtle, right? It's the subtle things. So if you look at two people, one who's nervous but trying to look calm, and one person who's actually calm, you can tell that there's something a little wrong with the the nervous person. But you're not sure what. You're not sure what. And if you can't tell, then I got bad news for you. <laughs> you probably work on your street smarts. You know, it sounds kind of bad, but. It's it's one of those things you need to learn. Is who's nervous? That that's something that I think a lot of teachers are actually good at is sizing up like who's nervous, who does not want to be called on, you know. But you know if you if you definitely do not want to be called on, you'll start like trying to avert your eyes, be like I don't wanna. But you don't want to avert your eyes too much, otherwise you make it obvious. But teachers, they know they can feel it. You don't want to be called on. And so that, that that's when they call on you. <laughs> they can feel your your nervousness. Anyways, go into here. Spawn once. Aha. Ah. 
non-existent function call deferred and base nil question mark damage numbers node hey what do you mean what is this base enemy oh is there something else i need to do here there is something else i need to do here uh so it's enemy damage numbers node is equal to damage numbers oh and then i also need to yeah i just forgot to do like the entire pretty much everything for some reason good job me yield enemy ready and then we'll do enemy global position is equal to enemy spawn dot global position look at that should work probably and so now we have more or less just a game look how nice and then they'll start spawning at the very end of the screen hopefully they're very slow <laughs> I like it. I love it. <laughs> There's so many of them. I think they're a bit too slow for the, the, the spawn rate, I think. So probably something that would help is uh, making it so they don't stack. <laughs> so they don't collide with each other, I guess. So I think I should probably put them on like a different collision layer, maybe. So if we go to enemies, all right, so gotta be very careful with this. Put these on, so uh, arrows are already on layer two, I think. Can I rename these? That's not how this works. Um, yeah, I think arrows are already on a specific layer already. Right, yeah, arrows are already on layer two. So let me see, there's like a, a way to rename layers here. So in 2D, no. Uh, <laughs> 2D physics. Yeah, so this is the, call this the ground layer. This is the arrow layer. This is the enemy layer. Right. It, it does look pretty cool though. <laughs> you have to admit, I think it looks pretty cool. Um, I guess that didn't help any, that, that didn't really help, but that's fine. Okay, so these will exist on layers one and two, but we'll only check for collisions on layer one. So this way, the arrows, Arrows will check for collisions on ground and enemies. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so what I'm doing here, so arrows will exist on layer two, but they will not check for collisions on layer two. The ground is always layer one. And then enemies will exist on layers two and three, but will only check for collisions on layer one. So they will never collide with themselves. Right, and then arrows will always apply a collision, so it doesn't really... <laughs> we don't need to listen for arrows. Arrows just need to listen for enemies. Right, so we, we... Kind of go with a system of attackers apply physics. Defenders will never apply their own physics. Right, so we'll just kind of wait. Boing, 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 boing. I need to add a system so that... Uh... I need to add a system so that, uh, th like, the arrow velocity is, I guess, it's like a charge up system, I guess. All right, so those are all your snails. Ugh. Oh, so you can hit multiple snails. If you kind of, like, do that. That's a bit, that's a bit jank. <laughs> but, yeah, this is, I mean, this is pretty much the game, right? It's, it's more or less like a clicker game. <laughs> it's more or less a clicker game. Uh, it is a lot of snails though. 
Oh, because you know what? I forgot to add a limit on the, the spawn. <laughs> so now it's actually just like a clicker game. <laughs> We're in survival mode. I like it. I love it. I think this looks, it looks pretty good, I think. I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> if I, it looks pretty good if I do say so myself. If I do say so myself. Um, so, arrow. I think we want to do this. Um, we want to do it like this. Oh, wait, what the heck? Hold on, something's a bit weird here. Some arrows. Hold on. So this one should not listen for... Yeah, actually, yeah, arrows do not listen for collision that on that layer. This one listens for collisions on that layer. I think I got that wrong. So we only listen for collisions on layer 3. I think this might make it so we're not able to hit multiple enemies at once, maybe? Question mark? Boing, boing, boing. Boing. Oh, I mean, that's cursed. <laughs> so the, it does need to listen for collisions. Hold on. We do need to listen for collisions on layer one. I forgot. Start me again. Start me again. So I think I need. I do need to add, move the spawn point a bit closer, but then we should be able to shoot. Nope. That was weird. What happened to the the arrow? All right. So we're still able to hit multiple things at once. So that's that's a bit cursed. Hold on. So do. You... Base enemies only exist on layer one? Wait a minute. <laughs> I'm confused now. Hold on. On body entered. So on body entered is hooked up to the area 2D, which is our basically our hitbox. And then we can do something like this, right? So we'll, we'll keep the initial logic. I'm not really sure what was going on with that. Yeah. It's a bit weird. Not totally sure. Since... Huh? <laughs> Wait a minute. So this, this one will definitely work. We don't have any weird glitches when we use this. Boing, 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 boing. Like, these arrows will not just randomly disappear. And then this also just works. I don't know what's going on with that. That's weird. Let's not question it and instead just do... Bar has collided. Collide. Collided. Which is a pool. False. And then here, uh, we'll do if not, if not has collided, then has collided is now true. And then we'll do all this, all these checks here. So we will only want to process one collision per arrow, right? I guess unless it's a special arrow, but. We'll work with that. We'll we'll deal with that when the time comes. Boing, 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 boing. So let's see. Ooh. Look at that. <laughs> what the heck? What is this? We can't stop them. <laughs> what happened? If not has collided, yeah, has collided is false. If not has collided, 
and has collided is true. Yeah, it's something weird that's going on with... with uh, these areas. Okay, so let's... Oh, uh, let's just collide with these things. Collide with these three things. That's weird. I don't, I don't know what's going on with there. With that. <laughs> but not with there, with that. Yeah. And then another thing, let's move the spawn, I guess, just closer. Uh, I know I need to think about the that implementation. Something seems a bit off. Yeah, see? It like it just kind of went away. Yeah, you see now it's working with single collisions. But sometimes the arrows just kind of yeah, sometimes the arrows just kind of go away. What's going on with that? Hmm. So collision is now visible, so you can see that all of this stuff. So sometimes they just disappear. I'm watching the collision. Yeah, see? Yeah, see, some of these just went away. What the heck? That's no fair. <laughs> Is it with like... I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see if there's like a specific angle that they just go away at. Turbo click. Uh, I have one of the benefits of uh, having a laptop plus an external mouse. Oh yeah, see what the heck? It, it collided with something. Yeah, that's weird. It collided with something random, invisible, and then just kind of went away. But it's not. Um. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I have an idea. So, arrow. Your collision shape. We're only ever using your collision shape. Or we're not even, we're not using your collision shape for anything, right? So there's no layer? Right, it's really only, I'm, I'm, I'm really only using this so that I can, uh, I guess use, apply physics to it. So what if I just turn off collisions? I guess physics body collisions. Um, I'm trying to watch the arrows. So what I don't want is for the arrows to disappear just in the middle of the, the air. They should, they need to collide with either the ground or an enemy. Yeah, I think it looks better now. Yeah, maybe they were just colliding with some random stuff. And you, you might notice that I've been- I'm just using squares <laughs> for all the, the collision shapes. That's intentional. Yeah, it would be more accurate to make these like, uh... I guess like capsule shapes, but... You know. I think that works. That works though. That works. And then the, the really cool part about this is that since it's using GLES2, uh, in theory, it should be really easy to export this uh, as like a, a web game. So it should work pretty much everywhere, I think. Yeah. All right. You know what? I'm gonna... I, need to, I need to use the restroom really quick. I'll be right back. Goodbye.
Hello, 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 I'm back. So... Let's see. Actually, why did I open this up again? What we need to do is... Check to see the, uh, the kind of enemy data list, right? So enemy data contains a list of enemy names to enemy counts. So... <laughs> Let me see. So we need to, we we maintain a list of every single enemy. Uh, okay, sure. Hmm. Oh, you know what? So we we can do a few things. We can. I guess, one, we need to maintain a list, like a kind of a rolling list of eligible enemy spawns. So we'll do if enemy, yep, if enemy list dot size is greater than zero, or is less than or equal to zero, then just return. Right, so then we, kind of safely null check ourselves. Then here, on spawn timer. Oh, and then here, whenever we spawn an enemy. Uh, okay, so we need to have the random enemy ints. And then we'll need to grab the enemy name. Yeah, so this is var enemy name. One of these. I got a text. Let's see. Oh, I received the dividend. Oh, baby. Investing. Thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> uh, anyways. So that's our enemy list. So then enemy name. We'll load in the enemy name. So we, we're kind of simplifying a few things, but also here we'll do We'll need to normalize the enemy list based off of the enemy data. So then enemy data dot enemy name. So enemy has an enemy data referred to two different things. Enemy data is uh, enemy name to an integer. So then we'll, we'll just set it equal to one. So we decrement it. If enemy data enemy name is less than or I guess it's yeah let's just do less than or equal to zero then we'll need to do enemy name dot over or not not enemy name it'll be enemy list erase enemy name so that we cannot use it anymore oh and then spawn enemy I feel like yeah, this, this can actually now return a boolean, right? So if we successfully spawn an enemy, return true, otherwise return false. And then we can do if spawn enemy, then do this. Right, and I think this one do if spawn enemy yeah 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 and then we don't need to have something here so because we always need to go down this path or this path this path is just kind of like just happens to exist <laughs> okay cool so then the idea here is that we only ever spawn in or we we kind of keep track of how many we're spawning in, and then we kind of clean up after- uh, what? It went away. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, some- sometimes the- the arrows just kind of pop out of existence, huh? Yeah. 
I don't know what's going on there. Yeah. Let me see. Arrow, on body, entered. So the lifetime is 10 seconds. And then we just add delta to the lifetime counter. debug. <laughs> so I can see that sometimes it's colliding with something. I just don't know what. I just don't know what it's colliding with. So new game. Start. Yeah, so sometimes they just pop out of existence. Not entirely sure what's going on with that. Yeah, and we didn't print anything either. Huh. Let's see. Hello? I never thought I would live long enough to meet a low-poly duck in a game de video game developer. One and the same. It's true. It's true. I wrote this piece of software, by the way. Uh, it is free and open source under MIT license, available on my GitHub uh, under the name OpenCPageGD. Because you know, I didn't write the face tracker part. I just wrote like the the bindings to the renderer, and then also it works for more than just anime models. <laughs> but it does support anime models. Yeah. But hello, hello. Rule, 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 Lexi. Yeah, I wrote this. I also wrote the uh, this thing. Wow, it's kind of like stream avatars, except not really. Also, both of those things are written in Gideo. Uh What I'm working on today, if you've ever played, I guess if you're really into Maple Story, you might have played. A kind of fan game called Hunter's Story. <laughs> and so Hunter's Story was a flash game. I wanted to play it, but it's it's no it's you know, I don't wanna have to download a flash player to play it anymore. So the game is simple enough, so I decided I would like to try to remake it. So you might recognize the blue snail. Very Maple Story esque. What I'm trying to figure out now is why sometimes They'll shoot an arrow, and then they'll just disappear mid-flight. And it only appears to happen when there are enemies on screen. Which implies that it's colliding with something. But I have no idea. Like, I'm, I'm trying to see... I'm, I'm trying to track each arrow with my, with my eye and make sure that they're not... Like, de preemptively despawning. So that looked good, right? So each arrow is its, is actually like a separate physics object, so it's controlled by the, the physics engine. It's a rigid body, as they say. Yeah, it, it appears that it, uh, they only randomly despawn when there are enemies on screen. I'm not sure why. Bum, 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 bum. Yeah, see, those two just disappeared. I wonder if it's routing, or if it's calling Q free on the in on the wrong uh, on the wrong arrow. I don't know. That's weird. I need a way to also go back to the <laughs> the level select screen instead of having to just uh, restart the application over and over again. On body entered. So area 2D connect. So these are all kind of instanced in by the player, which is the player is just its own thing, right? We're 
not using Delta because we're not doing any movements. The player is just literally just a node 2D. Just a 2D position. Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Arrow. Arrow, no call deferred at child. And then we also set the position later. part like uh, the fact that we sometimes have to yield what if we do like a like an initial position as well so initial position which is a vector two always just kind of zero it out and then here global position is equal to initial position right get rid of this call deferred or this yield not call deferred arrow initial position is equal to this our global position, right? And then we can also change this, which is the base enemy stuff. Uh, so on the combat screen, what we do whenever we load in a new enemy is that we yield for them to be ready and then we set their position. But we can do something like this. So these are all, I guess, kind of instanced in values. Let's see. <laughs> Let's do var initial position, some sort of vector two. I guess we don't need to. Um, we don't need to set defaults because we'll always set it right. It doesn't matter. We can assume that these will always be available. Which might not be a great idea, but we're doing it. Initial position here. Then we get rid of this yield. Let's see, enemy initial position is equal to spawn. What is the spawn? What's it called? <laughs> What is it called? It's called the enemy spawn. Enemy spawn. Global position. Yeah. So usually when you're working in pretty much any engine, you want to use the, the global position when you're working in, I guess, uh, the regular level. If you need to move something within another that's relative to, a, I guess, a parent node, then you would want to use just regular position. And so that kind of stuff is nice when you have, I guess, like if you have like a tank, right? And so you would want to modify the rotation, not the global rotation, because you also want to take, well, because your tank can move and then your turret moves somewhat independently, right? So I think it depends on how you want movement to kind of work for you. But generally, you would want to do it this way. And I, I want to know what it, everything, it, it, like it's colliding with something. But, wah. Wah. Invalid set index, initial position with value of type vector two. Did I spell it wrong? In oh, I spelled it wrong, yeah, for sure. Initial is a hard word to spell, man. Ah! And now this is wrong as well. Oh, God. Hold on. So I go into new game. Start. It is a wait for arrows to start. Yeah, sometimes they despawn. I don't know. Look at that, yeah. You can kind of see them despawn in midair. I don't know it's I don't know why that happens. So this is the arrow script. And then on body entered. 
on body enter so area 2d we can listen for body entered emitted when a physics body 2d or tile map enters this area 2d requires monitoring to be set to true body is the node if it exists in the tree body the node uh Hmm. So that that is correct. That is correct. Body is just the node. Hmm. And then we don't want it to, I guess, monitor. Like we we don't want it to listen for contacts. So this makes sense. Other monitoring areas. So we, we want to monitor. Okay. Uh, shouldn't be input pickable, but <laughs> that's not really a, a huge deal. But we do want to listen, for, so if we do this, right, we modify the mask, now this will just follow through the floor, yeah. But we're still sometimes losing it, hmm. We just add these two layers to the, the collision, so it doesn't matter. I wonder if it makes it more consistent. No, sometimes we're just, we're just losing them for some reason. Hmm. Sometimes we just lose them for some reason. I have no idea why. So we turn off all masks. What happens? I have no idea why this is happening. Like, you shouldn't lose arrows just because. So clearly we're colliding with something. Clearly, we're colliding properly, right? <laughs> um, let me see. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm losing my mind. Um, hmm. Like, collisions are working, but we're just Q-freeing the wrong thing. Let me see. Actually, give me one sec. I need to do something really quick. <laughs> give me one sec. Low on back. Uh, I wonder if it's this part. I wonder if it's this part. I wonder if we're ever getting to this part. 
So we have a few Q frees. So I'm trying to figure out which one is being called. So we have a lifetime timer, right? So yeah, see, we had one just kind of disappear. Hmm, that, so that wasn't it. How about this one? Are we just randomly hitting the floor? I'm not seeing anything just randomly hit the floor. That's not right. Hmm. 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 <laughs> I don't know. And we're not. All, we're also not printing hello at all, which is uh somewhat unexpected. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the console open on my other screen here. So we hit the floor. Nope. Just kinda goes away. Oh, uh, you know what? I wonder if the contact monitor, if it's if it happens whenever something spawns. So for like the split second whenever it spawns. For the split second whenever it spawns. It, uh, it's, it's contacting it. I wonder if that's it. Also, it's never hitting this part for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with that. Uh, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's the issue. I'm pretty sure that's the issue. So, enemies path. So we don't really need, like, an enemy spawn, right? Or we don't need, like, an explicit enemy spawn? What we can do is... We can change this. Yeah, so we'll, we'll call this like enemies... Yeah, enemies spawn... So we'll, we'll just spawn them at the that node, actually. Or what if we just do this, right? So whenever we initialize uh, we'll do like uh, enemies dot global position is equal to enemy spawn dot global position one of those and then hopefully that gets rid of some of our just random uh, Q free errors because we are just randomly losing arrows sometimes I think that was it <laughs> I hate it. I think that was it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, you know what? What was happening is for one single frame, the enemy, you know, spawns in at the middle of the screen. And then after that, it just kind of uh, goes away. Also, the arrows are not hitting the ground for some reason. So they should. They should not just fall through it, but I, I'm noticing now that they're just falling through the ground. Right, so that's a bit weird. So what is the ground? What layer is the ground on? Groudon, my favorite Pokemon. Pokemon. Um, so we're listening for collisions on layer one. Hmm. If body is in group, enemy group, then we'll do whatever this is. L if body is in group, floor group. Did I add this to the floor group? Might not have. No, it, it is in the floor group, right? Uh, so if I open up game manager, this is the floor group. Yep, floor. Yep, 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 yep. There it is. Uh, I don't know. Let's. I guess we can just add a... We can add... We can listen for these as well. It doesn't make a huge difference. Ooh, 
That's weird. That's weird. Maybe everything needs to have at least one uh, layer. Is that it? I, I don't know what's going on. No? <laughs> See? That's so weird. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> why, why is this happening? Monitorable? Is it because I turned monitorable off? There's so many questions. I have so many questions and no answers. Is it because monitorable was off? Uh, that shouldn't matter. What? Because the, the arrow should be listening for contacts. Eh, okay, sure. I don't know. Whatever you say. But at least now we're not getting that kind of weird glitch anymore, which is nice. Boing, 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 boing. Yeah, okay, cool. So that's good. Let's actually save state here. So this is open C page GD. We don't need that because uh, they're not working on that anymore. Hunter story GD. We're on the, the senpai branch. How nice. Let's commit our code. And of course, this game is also going to be open source, free and open source, because I don't know. I don't know who would want to pay for it. So that's why we're just kind of sending it. Uh, and so, yeah. <sighs> so, get commit. What do we want to do? Let's commit. Mm. Implement levels. Implement better collision handling. So, I don't know. Let's send it. Get push. All of this stuff. So of course this is also available on my GitHub under the name Hunter Story GT. Cool. I accidentally left like a new line. Hold on. Git status git <laughs> commit am rebase git. What is it called? Git rebase I had two. Oh, this is not rebase. This is fix up. My bad. So we're squashing the commit, get push force. Yeah, okay, there we go. No one saw that. <laughs> um, I feel like I need to, I feel like I should like alias a command to just like squash, like oops. Ignore the previous commit. We made a really quick change. <laughs> so now we have squashed the, we have squashed the, the new commit into the previous one. So I think the final thing, we can get rid of spawn blue snail, because clearly this works. And then here, if spawn enemy, okay. I think we, we do need to, we do need to pull for input. So we'll do process delta float. Oh, hello, Philippe. How are you? How are you? Check this out. I'm hyped. <laughs> Holy crap, Sony got me. What, what are we hyped for? Or what are you hyped for? Should I also be hyped? Is it the new Fallout game? Was it, is it Skyrim? Oh, baby. <laughs> Spider-Man 2 for PS5. Uh, Venom and Craven. I'm going to be honest, not a huge Spider-Man fan, so I don't know too much. Wolverine by Insomniac. Oh, I, you know what? I think I heard something about Wolverine. Yeah. This is what I've been working on. <laughs> Not nearly as cool, but it's more nostalgic for me. And God of War Ragnarok. Yeah. Arrows. Haha. <laughs> We're shooting mushrooms. Or these aren't mushrooms. These are actually snails. It's very Maple Story esque. Yeah, man. If you if you have the time, you should check out. You should totally check out Hunter Story which is the, the stream title as well. You do need to download a, a Flash web player, but <laughs> that's why I'm remaking it. Way more juicy than most stuff I did. Yeah, 
well. Uh, you could do it too. If you want to just <laughs> waste your life working on games that won't make money. <laughs> that won't make money. <laughs> it's just fun for me. I think the, a lot of the juiciness is because I, I do have like the... I think animations really help and then also the... the there's like the one... I guess uh, the, the, the damage number looks kind of nice. Remember playing Bowman? Oh, uh, Bowman? Well, Hunter Story is based off of... It uses Maple Story assets. <laughs> I, I played Bowman as well. Bowman is pretty good, but it's not really the... I think Bowman is, a, is slightly more realistic. It's not really as much of an incremental game. Like, Hunter Story is one of the... I guess the, the earlier incremental games before Cookie Clicker. Yeah, Hunter Story was before Cookie Clicker, but they're they're kind of in the same genre, where you, yeah, you, know, you 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 just kind of go through stages, accrue money, get stronger, so you can go through harder stages to accrue money faster. <laughs> no, no, I like I like incremental games. I feel like I shouldn't. Like it kind of goes against like game dev philosophy of having like you know actual game mechanics. As opposed to just, you know, numbers go up, haha. Uh, so what I'm trying to do here, I need to implement a way to check for... I guess, are we done spawning? So we can do var eh, done spawning, so false, and then... Yeah, so if done spawning if done i did one once but a pretty basic one yeah i've done a i've done a few incremental games um there oh you know what there's another incremental game that i really liked playing it's really slow at getting fixes though let me see if i can remember it oh god i'm just gonna slowly type in it's 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 a heroku app uh Oh, Proto23, hit you with one of these. Now this, this this is an incremental game that's actually pretty fun to play. You know, can't be a can't be a brainlet though. You do have to do a little bit of thinking. It's like a it's like a text-based adventure mixed with an incremental game, which is pretty cool in my opinion. I think that that's a fun project I would like to do one day. Pro probably not on stream. That's not really a good stream game. Anything text-based is already pretty bad for streaming. And then if enemies... Uh, uh, you made... No, I did not make it. I would like to make a game like that, though. I would like to make a game like that, but I did not make it. <laughs> I think it's made by like a Japanese guy. It's pretty cool though. I believe it's made in Node.js though, so that's why sometimes it has performance issues. That'd be cool though. Yeah, text-based RPGs. Text-based RPGs mixed with an incremental game. I think that's that's kind of untapped. That's kind of an untapped market. Done spawning is equal to true. Else, done spawning. Actually, we don't need to do that here. We can kind of loop all this here. So done spawning is equal to true, right? So here's the idea is that once we're done spawning and the enemy counts is equal to zero, uh, we'll just go back to the previous screen. Haha. I suppose we'll also have to display a score at some point, but... So, in the original Hunter Story game, you would complete a stage and then get a score based off of, I guess, the your accuracy and then also, I guess, your health. So, I think you could get hit... I actually don't remember how many times you get hit. I think it was based, you would have just like a health stat 
Um, and then different enemies would hit you for different amounts of damage, something like that. So, <laughs> basically Maple Story. I, Maple Story is one of the <laughs> my childhood games that I played. I know it's a bad game, but I just like playing it. <laughs> it's it's a it's not a good game for sure, but it is fun to play. Cause it's it's also very incremental game esque. It's like RuneScape but two D, and uh I guess anime. I guess you can you can kind of see the games that I like to play. <laughs> incremental games. I played a lot of RuneScape as well. Uh. Pretty much just absolutely trash taste in video games. Like a lot of old Flash games, you like Xiao Xiao, Bug on a Wire. What's what's Xiao? Yeah? Oh, you know Xiao Xiao, Xiao Xiao sounds familiar. Punkomatic, Bug on a Wire does not sound familiar. Punkomatic sounds familiar. I think I, I would need to see it <laughs> to know which game you're talking about. Uh, here we, I think to do, we need to show uh, stats first, but instead of doing that, we're just going to do game manager, main change screen to whatever, something like that. And then combat screen, we'll always go back to level select after this. So let's preload const, let's hit it with uh, level, Xiao Xiao is the one with stick figures fighting on a beat em up on a PC desk. Hmm, I don't know. Is that like uh, is that like madness? It's not. It's not madness. I know. I liked watching madness animations, but I don't. I, I can't remember. You know, there was a. There was a flash game I played way back in the day. Um, that like really messed with me for a while. It was like uh, like it was one of the few flash games that had like a, a story and the story was like you were a priest and it was like the world has been consumed by Satan but God has shown me the way. It opens a Bible <laughs> and there's a gun inside of it and then you just have to fight through uh, the city. I'm not sure why, but like the zombie sounds really, really mess with me for some reason. <laughs> like I, I had nightmares about that game. But I think it might be like this one you said. That sounds so cool and cheesy. Yeah. Like as like an older, as like as a you know a fully developed human, it sounds really cool. But like as like a six year old who's just playing like flash games, <laughs> that really messed me up for a while. I was oh god, <laughs> this is so scary, dude. Uh, I would like to find it again and see if I'm like still scarred for life. Uh, I remember playing one that was like a 2D DMC that will make cry so edgy. I love the edginess of flash games. Oh yeah, that was that was the best part of flash games for sure. Everything had blood or <laughs> cool poses. Yeah. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. Cannot preload resource at path. Hey. Why not? Preload. Hey. Is this not how you preload? Am I crazy? Uh, what? Let's grab this one instead. I don't know. Uh, I feel like I'm losing my mind. It's the same thing. Oh, is it because they have a? Is it because it's like a circular reference to each other? Uh, I remember a bunch of weird George W. Bush shooters. <laughs> Uh, have you played the? There's there's a there's a kind of an old game. It's like you play as a secret service agent, and then you just need to dive in front of the bullet. 
That's a fun one. <laughs> I think that one might actually be on Steam. Oh, it's a circular reference. That's why we can't get to it. So we, we can fix this, right? So we'll do load one of these. Yeah. I know this one, this one is pretty decent. You had to save Trump. <laughs> is it a Trump game? I thought it came out before Trump was a president. Yeah. Mr. President, I've assassinated the president. Yada, yada. Let's see. Mm, level select screen. So let's let's not preload it. So combat screen. Let's solve that error somewhere. We'll load in. Oh, don't like that. Uh, one of these days I'll make a I'll make a super wacky game. But that's not really my kind of forte. I'm not really good at making wacky games. <laughs> I'm more of a an idea guy. who makes, I guess, kind of cool game mechanics. This one still needs to be, uh, there's still a mechanic that's missing, which is right now every arrow is fired at full strength, which is incorrect. We don't want to do that. Uh, oh, there we go. So every arrow is fired at full strength, but now there's, I need to implement like a uh, what'd you call it? A... What's the word I'm looking for? Like a, you know, a percentage, so it's like you are firing at not full strength. <laughs> so you can, but you'll be at like a damage deficit and also have less range. I have a lot of ideas too, way more than I can keep up with. Yeah, I, I, keep, a, I keep a notebook, so I have a lot of ideas. Do you want some ideas? I, <laughs> they're for free. I don't care who makes them. <laughs> That's the only reason why I'm doing game dev. It's because no one else is making these. It's all, you know, I'll, I'll do it myself. I'll do it myself. The way you shoot is so good. How did you do that? And you have a texture with a number two in the snail scene. Yeah, so every arrow has uh, a damage uh, thing associated with it. So the idea here is that I'll create some more arrows. Um, or get some more arrow types, and then the damage is based off of uh, your statistics. Yeah, but the shooting is just handled like this, right? So every arrow is just a rigid body 2D uh, with no collisions. <laughs> so no collision layers and no collision masks, right? Uh, and so whenever the arrow is spawned in, it has an initial uh, speed. Right, so I set the speed to a thousand, and then I just apply a central impulse, rotated, according to the initial position. So you can kind of see here that whenever we load in, you know, the bow is also rotating to uh, to wherever my cursor is. And so whenever I shoot an arrow, I apply that rotation to the arrow, uh, and then just rotate the velocity, right? So it's what I'm doing is I'm just kind of shooting a, a physics object. It's a rigid body, so it's handled by the physics engine, which is not how the flash game worked. And then also very important is to update the global rotation by arctan2 or arctangent2, which is just the linear velocity y and linear velocity x. So it is very simple actually. And then whenever we hit something. Uh, I'm following the idea of uh, objects attack other objects. You know, attackers, yeah, attacking objects apply damage. Whereas you could also the the opposite philosophy is defenders receive damage. But no, I, I do attackers apply damage, and so all attackers will or all, all attacking objects will call a function, which causes the, the defender to receive damage. You don't want to do attackers 
apply damage and then also defenders receive damage at the same time. So you need you only need one object to listen. So I have the arrows listen for collisions and then apply collision damage, something like that. And so inside of this function, receive damage, it just does a bunch of weird calculations. So we apply damage, so there's health, uh, we have a damage number, which is one of these, so you can see here. Can type in stuff. Actually, it doesn't seem to work, so let's just ignore that. <laughs> don't, don't save this. Don't touch it, just in case it doesn't work. Yeah. So the the texture is actually based off of uh, this thing here. So let me see if I can open it up. Pixel edit. I like using pixel edit. I'm not not a huge fan of the ASE sprite UI. The recent documents, numbers. Yeah. So. This is what these are. These are the textures. I turn these into, um, I guess a bitmap font inside of Godot, which is kind of cool. And so every, um, so I'm, I'm just able to apply a number, I guess, <laughs> to, the, to the label, and then these numbers are just applied on top of that. So it's really easy, really easy. And so that all kind of comes together to give you this. Yeah, so this, this is less complicated than it usually is. Because <laughs> the idea is simple, because I, di <laughs> I didn't come up with the idea myself. How do you do a bitmap font in Godot? So I'm actually using an add-on. Let me see if I can find the add-on for you. Let's go to my GitHub. Under stars, it's it's pretty sick. It's pretty sick. Texture fonts. Yes, yeah, so if you want to use this, it's MIT license. It's pretty cool. Pretty easy to use, and also the wiki is pretty dope. Look at this. Oh baby. So just follow all of these instructions, and then you can just draw your own fonts inside of Godot. It makes it's it's super easy, for sure. And also a lot of options for like kerning and stuff. So, you know, just use that, uh, turn on the plugin, and then you're good to go. Yeah. I'm, I'm super plugged into Reddit. <laughs> People post this kind of stuff on Reddit all the time. I see it, oh, that's cool. It's mine now. Because it is MIT licensed. I do need to display the license somewhere. I, I, that's something I, I do need to get into the habit of doing. Maybe... I don't know if this is useful or not, but maybe I'll like I'll write a plugin that just... Uh, it just provides you a button that you can place somewhere on your in your game. And then it'll generate a pop-up containing the license. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, it's something that you do need to do, uh, especially when you're like distributing, I guess. Distributing your Godot games, you do need to also include the Godot license, because Godot is MIT licensed. If Godot was BSD licensed, you wouldn't need to, to shout it out. You said you don't use ASC Sprite? Yeah, I use Pixel Edit. If only because Pixel Edit is what I'm, I'm used to. <laughs> I think Pixel Edit, it's... People like to use Pixel Edit for tile maps. But if you're doing like, uh, like characters, people prefer using ASE sprites. I still ASE sprite, but I like I still like Pixel Rama more. ASE sprite feels weird. Yeah, ASE sprite. It's it's the UI, man. I don't like the UI. <laughs> the UI just makes it feel very gamey. Pixel Rama is okay. Um, I haven't used it all that often. I have it installed on my Mac. But, you know. Uh, so let's see, combat screen. I do need to store player stats somewhere. So where do I want to store them? 
Probably would make sense to throw them. So game manager, we have game data. Game data is a thing that we have. Uh, so game data. Okay, so we have experience. Hmm. So this is where it starts getting kind of weird. Hmm. We can have experience points. So what if we do this? We have export var health, export var speed, export var yeah, experience. Right? You see where I'm going with this? Uh, so then we'll go into enemies. Load up blue snail. And so the way that I've done this is that every enemy more or less works the same way, right? They all just move left from right to left <laughs> towards the player. Um, at some sort of constant speed with some sort of health. And then we can apply an experience modifier to them as well. So then... We can do this. Um, so base enemy, whenever they are killed... We'll do... Let's see. What is, what is the killed animation? <laughs> Uh, let's do this. So we can we can wrap up a lot of logic within this function. So killed. So it doesn't kill doesn't do anything, but it does do these things. Easy, right? And so we're wrapping a lot of logic behind this function, and then we'll also do game manager, game data. Experience plus equals uh, the enemy experience, basically, right? So this is the experience. We'll add it to the game data uh, because we do need some way to pass data around. So instead of passing data around, uh, we'll just store it in a singleton. Oh, baby. Uh, so that should work. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And because we'll only ever call it killed once. Right. And so we're, we're not displaying it anywhere for now, but we can look at it in debug and see what happens. So we just spam click, and we should have... So th this, nor this will not be accessible during normal gameplay, of course. And there we go. We can check here. Or that, that this kind of like spam function like, will not be available during normal gameplay. I suppose it will, but then your arrows won't go anywhere. Which is fair enough, in my opinion. And then, yeah, see, we spawned in 10 snails, and now we have 10 experience. There we go. So now I need some way to display this. So, main menu screen, no. Level select screen, yes. Uh, so let's see, we can open up level select screen. Uh, the experience, progress bar, um, general purpose progress bar, shows fill percentage from right to left, percent visible, hey, sure, For, that's theme stuff, what's range, so we have min value, max value, so okay, so we'll have, oh, that's tough, that's tough. So I'll need some way to store like your experience to the next level somehow. Hmm, let me think. This is like a, this is something I need to put I don't know. Where would I put that? Right, so the, the, it's it's very, you know, RPG-esque, so you gain experience points to move on to the next level. So how we sh how should we do level scaling? I think game data, that definitely needs to be modified. So you'll have experience, but then you'll also just have, I guess, a level, right? So var, level, that's an int. Um, 
And then we can also set these just as zero. Zero. So yeah, always start at level one. Hmm. And then we can have some sort of experience factor. So how, how would you do like exponential levels? <laughs> so experience to next level would be some sort of exponential value, right? Hmm. Let me see. Hmm. So th this is where the, the kind of incremental game mindset comes from. Because uh, you can go... I think in the original Hunter story, you could go to level 200, because that was the level cap in Maple story as well. I feel like that was a thing. I don't remember, I'm kind of just spitballing now. <laughs> um, you know what? Well, I'm over time, so let's just call it here. <laughs> It's, it's it's nice and easy. Let's just call it here. This is a good stopping point. You know, we're able to increase our experience. Now we just need some way to level up and also display it. Uh, and the problem with displaying it is that I need some uh, max value for experience until we kind of take over to the next level, right? So instead of doing that, because that sounds difficult, because it's a lot of math. I'm bad at math. Let's just do this instead. Add experience points. So get push. And of course, if you want to try this for yourself, by the way, uh, this code is available on GitHub. Free under Apache 2 license. So this is called Hunter Story GD. Look at that. If you want to, to check it out, just it should work in Godot 3.3 as well, but, you know, made with Godot 3.4. Apache 2. So, Apache 2, the only requirement is pretty much just... It's the same as MIT, but I think it does prevent you from suing me <laughs> as well. So, yeah. There we go. Anyways, thanks for tuning in. I'll be live... Sunday from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time working on something. I'll figure it out. Um, you know, as always, peep the socials. Have a Discord in my description below. Have a GitHub, which you can kind of see here, also in my description. Uh, and yeah, I will see you later. Goodbye.